Every year, tens of billions of animals are pumped with hormones, force-fed, brutalized, and live in disgusting environments covered in their own filth. Once they've outlived their purpose or have reached a certain size, they are led into a slaughterhouse. They are butchered and their flesh is fed to billions of people around the world. According to a UN Food and Agriculture Organization report in 2012, human meat consumption has doubled over the past century and by 2050, we will have to increase meat production to 470 million tons to meet expected demand. But scientists are working on this problem by growing artificial meat in their labs. This laboratory grown meat has been called many names, synthetic meat, fake meat, test tube meat, franken meat, but it is often referred to as cultured meat. It's grown from animal cells in a lab. Cultured meat is an alternative to conventional meat, but still biologically identical to the animal. If cultured meat becomes widely available, you could potentially get the same taste and texture meat grown from a lab without animal suffering or environmental damage that is inherent in the meat industry. This idea is not an entirely new idea. In fact, Winston Churchill suggested in 1931, we shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken in order to eat the breast or the wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. In 2002, a NASA-funded project was able to successfully grow filet from goldfish cells. By 2013, Mark Post, a researcher at University of Maastricht, revealed the first burger grown in the lab. The burger cost $330,000, but taste testers have described the burger to be largely having the texture and juiciness of the meat, but not the flavor. Post left and found a company called Mosa Meat. They were able to eventually lower the price to about $30 per pound or around $11 per patty. By comparison, an average pound of beef costs $3.70. However, as technology advances, the price of cultured meat is expected to drop. But how exactly do you grow meat in the lab? Well, first animal cells are extracted from an animal and placed in a petri dish. Currently, with the level of technology, these cells must come from an animal that just died. The cells are placed in a culture medium, which is usually a liquid or gelatinous substance containing nutrients for the cells to grow. Together, they are placed in a bioreactor where the environment can be controlled. Over the next few weeks, they form a thin strip of muscle. It takes about 20,000 muscle strips to form a patty. One bioreactor could make about 25,600 kilograms or about 56,400 pounds of meat per year. Switching from conventional meat to culture meat could have some positive impact on human health. Animal products in large quantities have detrimental consequences. They are the primary source of saturated fat which have been linked to stroke and heart disease. But cultured meats can be engineered with human diet in mind and maximum nutrition content needed. Livestock are injected with hormones and antibiotics to prevent diseases and grow larger. This has led to antibiotic resistant bacteria that has infected humans. In fact, the Center for Disease Control or the CDC estimates that the pathogens in conventional meats are often one of the most common sources of food poisoning. Farm animals and fishes are often unsanitary, and contact with contaminated meats can lead to E. coli and salmonella. Cultured meats would be produced in a sterile environment. They will be free of dangerous bacteria, and the meat that is grown in labs is not considered a genetically modified food because the cells in the meat come from stem cells that are grown in regular muscle cells in animals. Cultured meats can also help protect the environment and fight climate change. It is extremely energy intensive to produce enough meat to feed billions of people. The land used to house and feed animals takes up close to 30% of the world's land mass. The UN found that livestock is responsible for 14.5% of the greenhouse gas emission. Part of the reason is because of the industry's dependency on fossil fuel and methane and carbon dioxide produced by the animals. Chemical fertilizers used to grow grains for animals sometimes causes runoff that pollutes local drinking water and intensive cattle grazing can lead to land degradation and soil erosion. But as the population around the world increases, food production will naturally as well. More spaces will be needed to feed and house livestock. This can create a negative environmental impact such as deforestation which destroys habitats for millions of animals and plants. However, it might be too early to predict the effects of culture meat that will have on human body and the environment. New technologies often come with unexpected trade-offs that sometimes causes more problems. But that doesn't mean that we should stop researching and investing in lab-grown meat. But we might be getting ahead of, our of ourselves. Currently, the technology is too expensive and difficult to mass-produce cultured meat. Also, scientists might have to tweak the flavor and texture of the meat first. Nonetheless, in a few years, cultured meat might show up in your local supermarket aisle. Then we can all decide if it tastes just like regular meat.